Nvidia is making their chips in America. Intel has a customer and Windows 11 immediately begins degrading. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, October 20th, 2025. And we're gonna start off with the details of Nvidia and TSMC announcing that the first ever Blackwell US made wafer has rolled off the fab facility and has been essentially turned into e-waste and they signed it and stamped it and it can't work as a computer chip, but it could work as a piece of marketing material, which is exactly what it's being used for because TSMC's new fab in Phoenix, Arizona is the one that produced this Blackwell GPU, which is Nvidia's latest architecture. And CEO Jensen Wong just talking about how big of a deal this is the first time in recent American history that the most important chip is being made in the United States, which, you know, of course, Jensen's going to think his chip is the most important, but this is a big step forward for American fabrication for TSMC to have a latest node set up in the United States. It currently can do two to four nanometers as well as A16 chips. And TSMC also dropping a video showcasing how it all works in their silver highway. So in case you wanna see how the fabrication facilities work over in Arizona for TSMC, you can watch this. Intel already has a fab facility in Arizona. That's where they invited all of the tech press out to their Intel tech tour for Panther Lake. So they're competing for the water resources in the very, very nice oasis of Arizona. It's going to work out great. I'm sure everybody's sleeping soundly over there now that their chips are made in America. And in case you want to sleep soundly, you should check out today's video sponsor. I've got a level with you guys. Overall, me and my family's move across the Atlantic has been wonderful, except for one main issue. I had to leave my mattress from today's sponsor, Helix, behind. Helix instantly became my favorite mattress, and for good reason. They're both super comfortable and super convenient. The whole process of getting a Helix mattress can be done from the comfort of your home. Browse through their online catalog of 20 plus unique mattresses and toppers, place your order, and simply wait for your dream mattress to arrive at your door. The shipping is free if you're in the US as well. I'd been on my Helix pretty much since I moved to PA a very long time ago, and now I'm missing it every night. Helix's sleep quiz paired me and my wife with a mattress so perfect for our needs that nothing else compares. If you're grabbing a Helix mattress and haven't taken their Helix sleep quiz yet, what are you doing? It only takes a few minutes and it actually works. We got paired with a Dusk Lux mattress due to me being a side sleeper and my wife sleeping on her stomach. You can rest easy knowing you're on the perfect mattress for you and rest easy you will because you could be part of the 82% of participants in Helix's Whisper sleep study that saw increased deep sleep cycles. <laughs> the silver lining of not having my own Helix mattress anymore is that I was able to pass these along to my lucky friends and employees so they can experience the best sleep of their lives. The guys in the US office still have a Helix at home in the form of mattresses and toppers, as well as one at the office for a sneaky afternoon nap. I can definitely attest that I did that right before I moved multiple naps in that bed. Now is a better time than ever to experience sleep on a Helix mattress with their fall savings event happening from now until October 30th, where you can save 20% off site-wide. Big thanks to Helix for sponsoring today's video. Well, it turns out that Apple employees may have had a Helix sleep mattress because they're not waking up to fixing Siri, which is something that should have been launched over a year ago with their latest Apple intelligence. The reports are coming out that in the next iOS build, that's supposed to have the updated Siri 26.4. Things are not looking great. According to behind the scenes reports, people are testing 26.4 and it is not doing great in terms of the voice assistant's performance and that Mark Gurman believes that more higher ups in the AI department for Apple are likely to leave the company in the near future just because of how much they're struggling on the AI side of things. This is just really delayed. Siri was supposed to be more intelligent as of I think 17, 18. Never worked. They released ads they had to pull the ads, take them off, so nobody could see that, that Siri was supposed to do things that it can't. The upcoming Siri is supposed to have both onboard LLM processing power, as well as be able to access the cloud for some compute with a privatized Google Gemini setup. Whether or not uh, this continues to happen and uh, it actually is any good, uh, we'll have to see. I am curious, how much do you use your smart assistants on your phones, whether that's Siri or uh, Google's Gemini, I think is that? what it's running on most recent Androids or is it calling it something else? I think is, they transitioned over to a Gemini model. I'm just curious, uh, do you use it more now that they are enhanced, especially on the Android side of things, or are you still using it for the same basic tasks and it still does those just fine? Let me know down below in the comments. But while Apple is struggling with something that should have launched Intel 
finally getting around to getting people to pay them for their fabrication facilities. Reports coming out that their 18A node, which is what Panther Lake is going to be made on, finally has a major customer in the form of Microsoft. They are looking to make their Maya 3 chips over at the Arizona facility for Intel. They're supposed to be a third gen Maya 3 accelerator codenamed Griffin. In case you're not familiar, Maya is something that powers Microsoft's Azure servers for AI workloads. So Microsoft makes their own chips and now their chips are gonna be made at Intel. And deals are made right here locally in South Africa for US people. I know, I know everybody's upset with us for that, but that's just how we manufacture them. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, here's your first deal. Starting off, we have the Cooler Master NR200 Mini ITX case available in black for only $59.99, making it $30 off. But then next up, we have this LG 27 inch 1080p 120 hertz IPS monitor going for $104.99. And then lastly, we have this Corsair RMX 850X Shift, which is an 80 plus gold fully modular side interface power supply for $114.99, making it $75 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description description down below. But until next time, I'm Andrew back to that guy for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Risa, it turns out if you're still on Windows, you're getting a bad deal because things are breaking left, right, and center, and Microsoft plans on updating their stuff intentionally to do things that some people are not necessarily happy with. So let's start with the problems. Microsoft 11, in their latest update, broke a couple key things. Number one, localhost is now broken, which is something that devs use to test out servers. Having something run locally on a localhost is pretty important. Microsoft broke that with the latest Windows 11 update right after Windows 10 died, saying that they're gonna work on releasing a resolution for this in a future Windows update. So in case you want to do that, you might have to roll back, except for problem number two, you can't if you're using a USB mouse and keyboard because the recovery environment is unusable. So Windows RE is not working correctly. If you have a USB mouse and keyboard, you just can't access it. And it's, this is something that also broke in the latest Windows 11 update. The only way that you'd be able to use it is if you have a PS2 connector, which a lot of modern parts are not necessarily coming with. But uh, to all you unks who are running PS2 and saying, I told you so, congratulations, your time has come. So those are just the major breaks that are happening in Windows 11 as of right now, you might be thinking to yourself, gee, doesn't it seem like Windows 11 is having more and more issues moving forward? No, that's just your imagination, all right? It has nothing to do with the fact that up to 30% of their code is written by AI. Nothing's changed in the recent past to make you question how much is effectively getting done over there. They don't have any problems whatsoever. There are no issues with Windows 11, which is why they're rolling out some new features as well to make AI more important to the center of how you use the desktop and laptop operating system. So they're making it so that AI works naturally in text or more importantly, your voice, where you're now gonna be able to say, hey, Copilot, to get it to, instead of pressing the Copilot button that they put on all brand new laptop keyboards, you, you have, you're gonna say it instead as if that's the natural medium with which you interact with your laptop and your desktop, so that way it can uh, actually use the same things that phones do, because that's how it's gonna move forward. Additionally, they're rolling out Copilot Vision, which is going to allow Copilot to scan whatever is on your screen to give it context for processing whatever AI tasks that you want it to engage with. So Copilot Vision, hopefully opt-in, hopefully only activation only uh, when you choose to make it happen, but also could be uh, just something that you don't necessarily want baked into the core functionality of your operating system. Let me know what you think of all these Windows 11 enhancements and brokennesses down below in the comments while I see what you had to say in last week's episode of Hot News. We got Rocker saying, so basically, Pat Gelsinger set everything up and right at the crescendo, they kick him out and now he has to watch from the side. This is such a weird move. Well, okay, so number one, Pat Gelsinger wasn't kicked out. He retired, in case you uh, you forgot. He re retired. That was the official story from Intel's side of things. Number two, the one thing that Pat Gelsinger could not do was get their stock up, which was the only problem that they were having that he didn't warn them of. He warned them that they were gonna spend billions of dollars and be in the hole for the fabrication facilities. He was very forthright with that to both the stockholders, to the public, as well as to the people behind the scenes, letting people know that this was gonna be a massive money sink until they turned things around and uh, that unfortunately did not help when it came to the public perception of the stock and the one thing that Lip Bhutan has been great at is massaging that stock getting that that number up and uh, making people feel like Intel is doing better, even if the fundamentals haven't changed so uh, marketing is a big part of a CEO's job and it 
feels like Pat Gelsinger got kicked out because he wasn't a good enough salesman. And then Bud the Cyborg saying for the M5 chip stuff, saying time to enhance video in Topaz, 1.8 times faster than the M3. M3, so they're directly telling M4 owners, don't bother with the M5? Well, number one, no, they're not telling M4 owners that at all. Number two, people don't upgrade year on year. That is not a normal behavior. That is an enthusiast or professional level behavior where you're uh, switching that over. M3, M5, those are like base level chips. So this is gonna be for people who are getting the thousand to $1,500 MacBook, so the general consumer, and they are not upgrading every year. So it does make marketing sense for Apple to target them instead of the M4. A lot of people who are on the M4 probably bought them in the last couple months and Apple has an incentive to not make them feel like they are getting screwed over with the M5. I understand uh, peak chips being compared year on year, but for this entry level stuff, marketing sense just, yeah, they want the people who are, haven't upgraded in a while to upgrade. They don't want the most recent person to upgrade. I mean, they would like that if everybody upgraded year on year, but that's not how consumer purchasing cycles go. So uh, it makes sense that they're gonna actually target older chips for that. And the mother oats asking, so is Brett getting the M5 Vision Pro? No plans to, they're not available in South Africa. I did bring my original Vision Pro with me. It does everything I need it to do. I mostly use it for game streaming and I don't see how the M5 would help me besides it goes up to 120 hertz and it has a longer battery life. Not yet, not yet. No real reason for it. I don't have any content plans that could help me justify the purchase. It would really just be for pure vanity reasons and so likely not gonna happen. And then Tyler saying, how do you run an electronics and gaming podcast YouTube channel in a country that has blackouts all the time? Generators, I guess handhelds would be popular because anything you plug into a wall could crap out at any moment. I think, uh, the story of South Africans power, South Africa's power situation is more dynamic than uh, you would think. I haven't had a single blackout since I moved here. There is no active load shedding right now, which is the rolling blackouts. And then additionally, the way it works is that uh, load shedding is scheduled. So you have an idea of when your power is going to go out. So you have an idea of when you can work, when you cannot, what to uh, prepare for. It's not like the power just flicks off like that all of the time. That does happen. You know, we've had our uh, copper line stolen in, in the community uh, when we lived here before. Random power outages do happen, but I had more of those in Pittsburgh than I ever did in South Africa. Like my power outages in Pittsburgh were crazy frequent. It was ridiculous. There was one storm that knocked us out for three plus days. I've never been without power in South Africa for that long. You can adapt. Uh, it's usually on a schedule and currently it's not happening at all. So that it's, it's, you can be flexible. And then we got star one DRN saying, liar. Sorry, 